morning, the Ford Puma, because unbelievably I was going to bring the stag and uh, I went to a garage and filled it up with E10. I didn't realise and it wasn't clearly labelled. There's just a tiny label on the pump uh, that says it's E10. And, you know, I'm not absolutely clear as to what does that mean? Um, do I need to get it out of the tank? Uh, is the engine going to be running on it okay? So I'm off to the barns anyway this morning and um, we're going to have a chat with Nick who's been talking to some experts at some of the motor companies and uh, try and find out, you know, what does all this mean and what do we need to do? So Nick, I've explained to everybody already, I, I was going to bring the uh, Triumph steak this morning um, and I managed to fill it up with E10. Um, so Well done Les. Yeah, thank you. So um, I thought, I know you know quite a bit about this, you know, through your contacts in the motor industry. So I guess first of all, what's E10? So at the moment, you they're, they're selling uh, E5, right? Uh, that's your standard fuel unleaded fuel and that's five percent bioethanol so it comes from plant-based materials um, so greener um, fuel uh, the idea is that we then move to ten percent bioethanol so just up, up the percentage yeah. to ten percent yeah well I mean there's plenty online about that but I, I don't think I've had a definitive yet what does it mean what, what? It has two effects really. First one is it's hydroscopic, so it actually absorbs water. So anything that's open to water corrosion is going to suffer. So things like steel fuel tanks, uh, any steel fuel lines, anything inside the carburetor that's likely to get attacked. Um, some of the zinc parts in there, for example, they're likely to corrode. Um, the other thing is it, E10 in itself is corrosive as well to things like rubber fuel lines, some of the seals inside the carburetors. So it'll attack from two different fronts really. So yeah, it's, it's, it, for this age of car, it's not particularly nice stuff. Right, okay, so should I get this drained or? Yeah, yeah, you need to go and drain the full tank oh. right now. Okay. No, 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 it's, it's not that drastic, right? One tank of fuel won't damage the car immediately. Yeah. So you drive it every day, every other day, something like that. Um, so keep driving it get to about half a tank, fill it up with E5, right? So the thing to use, there is still the premium fuels out there. Yeah. So, what are they, 97 Ron, I think yeah. they are, yeah. uh, which are still staying at E5. And, and they're going to stay E5 for, for another time. another five years. Oh, I right. think they've okay. committed to another five years and potentially beyond that, right? I run this on super unleaded already. Yeah. Um, so clearly, I'm just going to keep running on that, but there is a cost penalty that comes with that, right? It's about 10p a litre more. Right. This thing does 11 miles per gallon, so oh, okay. I'm already paying the premium on this. Yeah, makes um, the Triumph stack sound economical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what cars does this affect then? I mean, clearly it affects cars of this age, but where's the sort of point where you've got to start worrying so I think anything, anything pre-2000 is, is really susceptible to it, right? There were, the materials that were being used at that point in time were, were susceptible to attack by E10. Uh, between 2000 and 2000, 2005, it's probably a grey area. Uh, I think check with your manufacturer. Anything after 2005, generally the materials have made a change at that point in, in, in the automotive world and are compatible. I think from a legislation point of view, it was 2011 when it was legislated that they must be compatible. But I think the manufacturers had already seen it yeah. coming with E5 and had, had put the right materials in there yeah. already. So is it possible to do something about it to get the car to a point, even this car, if I was determined to stay on E10? Do quite a lot to it, to be quite honest. Um, 
You have to go and change things like all the fuel lines. You have to make those E10 compatible. Uh, parts in the carburetors, uh, a lot of the seals in there, those sort of things would, would need changed. And things like your fuel tank. Your fuel tank, this has got steel fuel tank. It would need to be uh, epoxy lined, for example, to, to yeah, make so sure that it wasn't... A, it's a big job. Oh yeah, it's a big job. And then, you know, some, some other cars with things like uh, fiberglass tanks, the E10 will eat through the fiberglass. Oh, right. So, um, okay. yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a big issue if you've got one of these cars. You know, if, if you're going to, basically, don't use it. Yeah. Um, use super unleaded. So, I guess that, that concludes then and just says that, although it's August 21, um, and it's not supposed to come in until September, the fuel's already in the, the garages now, so have a look at them and uh, have a look at the pumps and make sure you're getting the right fuel. And the answer seems to be for this type of car is just make sure you use the super unleaded. That's all for now. Please subscribe to our channel in the link below. Do you have a classic car? Then we'd love to hear from you. If you have a story to tell on how you plan to keep it on the road for the future, please get in touch so we can feature your car in a future episode. If you're thinking about electric conversion, follow the link below to the Eco Classic website. You can catch up with all our previous episodes of Down at the Barns just by clicking on the link.